Sometimes y'all just be a little bit too aggressive, bro. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of people, you know, see y'all take your time. I got you. I got you. Now, now, my question to you is, am I being too aggressive to you, Butcher? Nah, even too. You know what I'm saying? Talking reckless, though. I'm talking about talking reckless. Give me an example why I'm talking reckless. Because, like, you being disrespectful, like, as far as, you know what I'm saying, to these people. I'm listening to both of y'all. I ain't now, never said anything you just, you just made an accusation against me. You said I'm being disrespectful. How am I being disrespectful? By telling me not to listen to you. No, I didn't. And by no, yelling over me the whole time I've been here. Now tell me when did I say that, Kay? Tell they me been, when did I say that? They've been yelling at me the whole what, what, time. Tell man. me what I said. Repeat back to me what I said. You ain't say a word for Thank you. I didn't say that. And I say that. What I did say is, I want to teach you because you out there. That's what I said. Ask him why he's got right. a microphone. So why is he yelling at you? That's why I have to have this. Shit the there was a gentleman named Kino that came right after the guy you were talking about earlier. And he has shared with them the frustrating part about engaging with Hebrew Israelites is not that they're, you know, not smart or don't have things to say, but it's the way they package the information that is just a huge turnoff. In fact, a lot of them yell, get real boisterous. Yeah, he said, and, I, I'm cool with y'all, but yeah. why are you so aggressive? And this is a guy off the street. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, aggressive. And this is a guy who self-professed. He didn't really hold any religion. In fact, he didn't support a like religion, but it just pushed him away. And so what he was designed to, and he even expressed this, that he heard them out now he wanted to hear us and the moment it seemed like he was going to turn his ear to us then the guy from IUIC started yelling and trying to drown us out and I mean even on an intellectual level if you don't agree with somebody's views to be able to hear them out speaks to a person's maturity and speaks to their willingness to hear and to entertain the thoughts of others and you know that's important you know as believers we're called to love people no matter if they're Hebrew Israelite no matter if they're a Christian themselves or no matter if they're non-believers and so I would expect more from someone who claims to hold to God's commands and one of God's essential commands that he gave was to love our neighbor as ourselves. No doubt. So, I mean, we're on the block right here. Uh, this is the neighborhood, in fact, I grew up in. So, if anybody's a neighbor. <laughs> right, yeah, you a neighbor. Yeah, right. Come on. Tell them the truth about what's in here. chapter 12, but verse 14. Yeah. Yeah. But God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So he said he's going to bring every Amen. judgment into uh, everything into Amen. judgment. Yeah. Rather be good or rather be evil. Yeah. And guess what? Amen. He's only referring to the Israelites. But did you notice at that one point when that second man got on the mic, how he started yelling, like screaming? Yeah, he changed his gear. Yeah, yeah. like something real serious. And uh, I mean... I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone Israelites, the Great Millstone Doctrine. Also, Shalom to you, other brethren, you followers of the truth, and Shalom to the elect. So, anyway, uh, this video here is something I noticed in the uh, process of making the, the previous video, every single time what I've noticed when uh, they see a white man, our people, this is our people, when they see a white man come up to the camp and start and kind of start debating or kind of coming against what we teach, that's when all the other black people start. That's when all, it could be a man or a woman, doesn't matter. I think the last 10 times this has happened with us, I think maybe 90, I, I would say 90%, 98, 95%, 90% of the time, that's when other so-called black people want to start stop up and give their two cents to defend the other nation. It could be a Chinese person. It could be a white person. Pretty much them too, right? Somebody who looks total opposite from us. If an African person stops up, they're not going to do that. But if a, a so-called white person or a Chinese person stops up and they're questioning our doctrine and what we believe, 90% of the time, if you get 10 times this happened, nine times, I think with us it was 100%. Every time our people came up to stop and listen and in the hopes of protecting the uh the other person. Now, in this video, the guy 
what what we see here, this is like a, what you call a um, a mindset of our people who will do anything to protect who they see. Now, that's the best way I could say it. Not only is the person with vocab in that mindset, but the guy, or not just the guy that was saying, hey, what about them? And, you know, you're disrespectful to them. Now, this same man, I, I can't prove it, but this same man more likely goes and have arguments over sports, arguments over various other things, go down the street and ready to fight somebody. It looks just like him. Shoot even. I'm not saying this man is that, but I'm pretty sure he had aggressive debates and there was never an issue about why to someone else. But when immediately, the minute, and this is how we know this man is in power. The minute they, they see that white man up there, then that becomes the issue. And you know why? Because it's, it's uh, s systemic oppression, systemic racism. When you look on your money, the first thing you see on that money is in God we trust. They were letting you know that we got this thing on lock and our people follow it. This is why Eve uh, uh, behaves towards us that way as well. Isaiah 1 and 3, the ox nor his owner, and even the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. This man immediately wanted to bypass the scriptures or anything the Bible had to say just to protect vocab and his side kicked that vocab let him speak and make his point and really belittle him by this man speaking for vocab is belittling him but you got our people who are willing to do that they don't care they'll throw it all aside and at the end of the day they'll sit there with vocab if they're bitter right or if they are so-called christian meanwhile there's so much christian racism going on that even k-dub was speaking on but meanwhile this man let me say that will bring to him peace and say it's all love it's all good but secretly you know they're secretly oppressing jake and that's good for you jake you get what you get you know, the crafty the craftiness of this man is incredible, you know. He know how to use trickery to get you Jake. This is Daniel 8.25. And through his this policy also shall cause, um, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And a religion was one of it, one of them. You know, doing the, um, this uh, Calvinistic uh, theology. If you look that up, how to universalize everything. But the meanwhile, they was bringing, saying it was all about peace. As Jeremiah 8 and 11, peace, peace, when there is no peace. But it was all really to destroy you. That's what it really was all about. So, you know, back in the 50s, when they had us dancing and everybody was coming to see us, all those, you remember, all of them came to watch us as great entertainers. But why couldn't we go into the bathrooms, you know? Why couldn't we go into the movie theaters? Why couldn't we drive in certain neighborhoods, <laughs> right? Because that's what they see you as because you were nothing but a so-called cursed people according to the Bible to them. And so now we see the truth and we'll get into that in a second, Lord's will. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. And that's how he use Christianity we wasn't really with that it wasn't until later that we were diving to try to be Christians because it was the popular thing you had benefits you know a man would do anything to protect do, do for his family so the master gave him extra benefits some perks and there you go it didn't take long I mean over a period of time so anyway let me get this uh, article here a little bit on the Jim Crow laws. It says, Jim Crow was the name of a racial caste system uh, which operated primarily, but not exclusively in southern and borders of states between 1877 and the mid-1960s. Jim Crow was more than a series of rigid anti-black laws. It was a way of life. Under Jim Crow, African Americans were relegated 
to the status of second class citizens. Okay, Jim Crow represented the legitimization of anti-black racism. Many Christian ministers and theologians taught that white whites were the chosen people. See that? Now, where was anybody? Where was the vocab? Where was anybody coming against this? This goes back to British Israelism, by the way. Blacks were cursed. This goes into the Book of Mormons, Second Nephi. Nephi. Blacks were cursed to be servants because they're going into. Um, they. This is why they labeled us and stuck us uh, solely in far as Africa, when obviously we, we was. Um, and uh, Africa, we was in Egypt, we was in Israel, you know, various other places. It wasn't just Africa. But it was the stigma they put on us to say that we're all black and African. So they can use this ideology to say that we were a cursed people from Shem, Ham, and Japheth, if you don't know the story in Genesis. Where Ham, you know, um, scripture says, cursed be Canaan of under Ham. So that Ham is... Um, noted to be Egypt but now even when you look at the, the Egyptians today is in, in Sudan they're not even actually in Egypt so the people's you know as, as a people land masses change people change but they try to link us and say okay we're those Africans so we were cursed while everybody was white couldn't stand the sun yeah, that's another video uh, but anyway Many Christians, uh, they taught that whites were the chosen people, blacks were cursed servants, and God supported racial segregation. This goes also back to um, Christian nationalism. That's where that goes to. Craniologists and eugenicists and every other doctor, uh, butresses, segregated, I don't know, says that the belief that blacks were in, innately intellectually and culturally inferior to whites pro-segregation politicians gave eloquent speeches on the great danger of integration and this is why they really suppressed us in in education they didn't want us to speak now remember the way we were speaking they'll make fun of us and how we talked but we learned that from our so-called masters because the southern whites couldn't talk so where did we get that from and they and the elites really kind of have an idea who we are so their main job is to keep us oppressed and ultimately enslave us you know um i think that's pretty much it on that i don't want to go too much on that i'm just that's to the point so this is why this guy is uh like he is this is why when you get on the bus now i remember going to school you get on the bus everybody ran to the back why would you do that? Because you're trained. That's why everybody ran to the back. That's why everybody does the same things through racism that was done. That's why we killing each other. We was starting to do that then. For power and control. All those, all those things that you see that was done then is programmed into us to do now. So this guy... Here he sees Vocab Malone is not even threatened, but he sees as um he sees Vocab as being threatened by men holding the Bible. Now if Vocab was a so called black man, it was two black men, you wouldn't have seen that. He wouldn't have said, Oh, you're arresting these guys here. We've never seen that. I've never seen not that it can't happen, but I've never seen when we out there teaching, a so-called black man, you know, look like us standing out there teaching, and we're going back and forth with debates, nobody else rolls up except to record and get some entertainment. That's it. They never step up and say, hey, y'all wrong. It's only when a white man does it. Every single time that I can remember. So Rock 12 and 10, never trust thine enemies for like as iron rusted so of his wickedness. Okay? Though he humbled himself, and go a crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And this guy that's with vocab, yeah, he's not going to get it. So this is all for the elect. And thou, sh and thou, and thou shalt be unto him, okay, as if thou 
has wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. You know, and this can go to our people as well. Set him not by thee, lest thine over be overthrown. He stand um, up in thy place. Right? So, you can read on. Uh, let me see here. So, one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? Okay? It goes on to say, who will pity a charmer that is bitten by a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beast? So he's comparing this, who will pity somebody who is um, bitten by a charmer or come near any wild beast. Some who that go up to a sinner and is defiled with him, like somebody who's playing with a snake that's poisonous. You know, it's a no-brainer. So one that go up to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. So when this thing start going down, vocab is going to think about his own. He's not going to worry about you, Jakes. You know? It, it, you know, it's another verse in here that said that he will even cry. But he would not be satisfied with blood. You know? So, you know, I just wanted to touch on that. I think the whole point was made. These guys like this, this is what they do. Every single time a white guy comes up, it's always Jake. Always Jake to the rescue. I'm pretty sure if that was two so-called black men there, that would not have happened. Anyway, that's all I have on that show.